Welcome and good afternoon to Hashtag the Channel at BDC. And I'm delighted to welcome some of the cast and crew members from the viewing that they saw this afternoon of Brass Young Turks. If I would first like to ask each member to introduce themselves to you, and then I can ask questions that the students have put forward. Thank you. I'm Naeem Mahmood. I'm the director of Brass Young Turks. And uh, yeah, just <laughs> making magic happen, you know, <laughs> with BYT. Hi, uh, my name is Paul Dankwa. I was a writer. Uh, I'm also a teacher. I taught uh, at BDC uh, last year. Um, I did apply for the film and media <laughs> position, but unfortunately, I wasn't successful. I think maybe Tarantino took over the part. <laughs> you know, you guys like the film the and kind of <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> My name's Melissa Latouche, and I play Nia in Brush Young Turks. Hi, my name is Paul Chidozi, and I play Taro in Brush Young Turks, and I'm also one of the producers as well. Amazing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I've got a mic. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now, the students have given me some questions, so if we could pose that, so whoever feels it might be suitable. Looking at it, I think it ends up being majority of asking you, I'm afraid, but anyone else can please chip in. First question is, what is the meaning behind the title? The title, uh, Young Turks, Brash Young Turks, is something I came across in this magazine. I think it was like a business magazine or something, and it kind of described these young movers and shakers as brash young Turks, like um, this sort of new generation of people who are going against the grain and not sort of following the norm, but they're shaking things up in the business world. And um, I just read that, and yeah, it just kind of hit me, and yeah, that hurts the young Turks, and then you just add brash to that, and okay. there's your answer. Okay. Can you tell us briefly the process you went through to get this film from conception onto screen? <sighs> It's almost like going to war. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. It's because it's, you know, it's. Uh, I had the producer of Hunger, a film by Steve McQueen, who looked at it not so long ago and he knew nothing about it and he just saw the film and thought it's probably a, a million pounds that we've spent on it. Um, but we had nothing, not even, even remotely close to that. So trying to put a, such a grand film together like that was, it was four years in the making. Um, it takes a lot out of you. Because you've, you know, there's about a three, four hundred cast in there. There's 50 locations, so just that process in itself is very challenging. And having to stay focused and having that stamina for that amount of time is very challenging. So it was a gruesome process, you know. Mm -hmm. But when you're passionate about your craft and when you want to make things happen, and there's not, you know, so many opportunities all the time, you've got to step up to the step up to the plate and and make it happen by any means necessary. Okay. Now, our students are creative media production students, and of course, we teach them about the process and everything. Now, you've just spoken about it taking you four years. One of the interesting things that they really would like to know is, how do you then, you've got your production, how do you get it to distribution and exhibition? With this particular film, uh, we didn't have no distribution when we started off. So when we were in the script stage, and even when we were... Um, in production, we didn't really have any distribution, but that didn't stop us from making the film. We said, you know, regardless if there's no, you know, support from the industry, we're going to still make this happen. And, um, you know, we got the right talent together and pushed and, and came through. But once you create that momentum and you're starting to, to create stuff that is good and, and has a voice and, and is different and stands out, you know, eventually the distributors came on board. But it didn't happen just like that. It okay. took time, it took perseverance. There was a lot of knockbacks as well. We, we held screenings even at Technicolor and who sponsored us. And they sponsored us because we again sort of created that momentum and made something happen from nothing. And we showed the film to a lot of distributors, a rough cut, and still there was no response. But we kept improving the film, kept going, and eventually we had a distributor who'd done a deal with Amazon Prime. Okay. But we had done the first step, which was we started getting the film out there ourselves, so we didn't rely on a distributor. Can, how did you get it out there? Did you go to festivals? Or? Yeah, yeah. so we premiered at, um, at a festival, and then it went to a couple of more festivals. Then suddenly other cinemas, there was like clubs that started taking it on board, and it started to build momentum that way. And once we started to build that momentum and we started to market the film, we got you know, a whole team together of young people and started marketing the film ourselves, 
once the distributor saw that, whoa, these guys are going to make it happen regardless, once they saw that momentum, they jumped on board and then just sealed the deal with Amazon Prime for the next couple of films and also now for the next couple of films, potentially with Netflix and, and Hulu and, and other platforms as well. But it took a long time to get to that stage, so it didn't happen overnight. It was a lot of persevering, and there was, you know, sometimes we didn't even know about certain avenues. It wasn't like, oh, this is just go to that distributor, knock on the door. We had to kind of research, get out there, hustle, and, and just make it happen, and keep going, you know, keep going, because there was a lot of knockbacks, but you've got to keep standing up as long as you believe in your project. And once you keep going and you bulldoze your way through, you're unstoppable. How are you? Okay, just stopping it there in the sense of in about the process. I actually want, how did you get hold of your cast and crew, your actors? Again, that was another big process. I think we put a lot of casting calls out. We went to agents and we must, there must have been about 500 people who auditioned for the film in a period of several months. Um, so yeah, a lot of casting calls, going to youth clubs as well. And agents like, and it was a great mixture as well. You know, you've got people from like, you've got Julian Glover from Game of Thrones and Star Wars, and then you've got like new talent who've never acted before. Um, you've got music artists like DWE in there. You've even got Boris Johnson <laughs> making a little cameo. How did you manage to get them on board, particularly Julian Glover? I mean, again, like um, when you're creating good stuff and you've got momentum and you're making things happen, these things are not out of reach. You know, we put a proposal together. We sent him the script, and I had a link to Julian Glover, Glover through the Prince's Trust, who were supporting some of the stuff that I was doing when I first started out. And again, they supported the stuff that I was doing because, again, we were making things happen. We were making films on our little battered old cameras and doing stuff, and they could see the talent there. So Julian Glover kind of came through that. But again, you know, when we sent him the script, he told him, you know, there's no, you're not going to get paid. And he said, oh, there's no bloody money. I don't know if I can do it. I'll send me the script. And... You know, but we sent him the script and we showed him the vision, you know, and sent some concept art. And yeah, he just, he knew that these guys are moving and shaking. And we said to Julian Glover, you know, we're going to roll back the years with you. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was on board. Okay, going as an actress, was this your first role? Uh, this is my first main role. Okay. I've done bits and pieces in the past, mainly commercials and doubling work in Harry Potter and things like that um but yeah this is and how was it working role. with the director on this film <laughs> that's what I check out <laughs> no you don't <laughs> this is a reality yeah. check yeah. <laughs> yeah well it was i mean it was very positive mm. i learned a lot from mine and and brash young turks and working with everyone um in the cast and crew um i'm not going to say it was always plain sailing there's times when you have to repeat stuff to the point that you're going to go crazy um, and you want to say, you know, what we were walking up the Cornwall <laughs> Hill, up and down, and we're this close to the cliff edge, and like Paul's yeah. like not having yeah. any, any of it, and I'm, I, you know, you're, you're having to run out of the sea, it's, it's tiring. I mean, it's not all glamorous, yeah, we don't so. go back at, in trailers and stuff and no one's catering for us, but we're all passionate about the project. And to be quite honest, it's been the biggest learning experience acting-wise for me, and I thank my... And is my wife. understanding correct? None of you were paid? <laughs> or was it... Was paid it, and kind. Moving on to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave that one there. <laughs> yeah, um... <laughs> for me, I've done things before that, um, mm -hmm. obviously, acting-wise. Um, I actually met Naeem before that as well, and um, for me, that was one of the key factors of why I even jumped on this project. Um, to me, Naeem's an amazing talent, especially when it comes to, you know, the UK and what the UK... He's got to say that. Yeah, because he's got mm -hmm. paid, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of the UK and what the UK is doing, you know, as, a, as an actor, there's not really much out there for you to kind of even, even on a small scale, kind of push yourself as an actor. Yeah. And um, as soon as Naeem kind of, kind of came knocking, I was just like, yeah, I'm doing whatever. Do you know what I mean? I, wherever it is. And luckily for me, you know, I know this is a bit cliche, but in terms of this film um, and what it represents, it's beyond just okay the process of making the film because the actual process of making this film is what it's about when it comes to achieving stuff you know what i mean the actual story in the film about you know persev persevering and kind of um, aspiring to be something to me this is something that i'm playing as a character but i'm learning while i'm doing the role at the same time and um you know work with naeem um he's all about that 
You know, so it's not just about, okay, here's your character, learn the character. No, I'm going to learn it anyways. So I, during, while I was on the project, I learned so much from Naeem, even from Paul, from Melissa, from the other characters. Um, that's also why I jumped on in terms of being a producer in the movie because, you know, I kind of engaged but also kind of respected um, what he was trying to tell and what he was doing, not just with um, the film itself as a story, but with us as actors because Naeem's one of them people that he's not just okay, just get the role done and okay, move on with your life. It's kind of, okay, you can create something here. I'm here to help you. This is just a tool. Use that, you know, become more than what you expected before you jumped on this project. And to me personally, just like Melissa said, I learned so much from the film that is expanded, you know, where I wanted to go before I made the film. So, and I feel like, you know, Naeem's done that. So, working with him is, you know, I'm still working with him, so. <laughs> He hasn't put you off. Oh, unfortunately. Not yet, not yet. Yeah. I'm still waiting to get paid, though. <laughs> In the next film. Yeah. I like to ask, Paul, how did you get involved? I mean, you, you wrote the script. With, uh, with Naeem. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, I've known Naeem for a long time, and we've worked together, like, uh, making uh, short films and stuff. Um, y usually, uh, this was different for me, because Naeem asked me to come on board. He came up with an idea. Originally, it was a short film. Then he sort of developed a rough sort of version of a, a script um, that he I, I asked me to read through, I initially threw away and then said, let's write a proper one. No, um, no I, he asked me to sort of just look through it and the first draft was always going to need some fixing up and stuff like that. And it's different for me because I always write by myself. That's how I feel natural. I'm usually in a cupboard by myself with a pen and a paper and a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even need a pen and paper, but... Um, <laughs> with, working with Naeem is different. You scripted that as well before you... <laughs> <know. laughs> But, um, we yeah. have young students here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys will learn about that a bit later. <laughs> um, yeah, so working with Naeem, I, it was diff a different method of working, but it was interesting. It was good to have that back and forth and have that relationship. And we'd always, uh, it's hard as well. You have to compromise, but not in a bad way. You're trying to find the best way. So Naeem uh, might, I might make changes on something Naeem's made, and then he has to sort of not always agree, but then you know he has to sort of see if I've done something right and sort of say, oh, that's good and that's funny. Um, if you change something on mine, then you know I'll just rip it up and throw it in the bin. But um, no, you have to again sort of accept it and kind of uh, you're finding the best story together. And I think we worked very well together. We had a good synergy, a good understanding, and then ultimately we we got to a place where we we're both happy with what we were producing. So. And sometimes there's some things that, you know, within this project that might not be achievable, so the scripts will get changed. So Paul wrote something about the characters going to Mars or something, so I was like, maybe, you know, maybe in part two, we can't really do this in part one, so let's make a little change over there. So sometimes that's why things get changed as well. Did you change any of the um, versions while you were f actually filming, or did you stick to the final script? I think a script uh, it always it evolving develops. It always, yeah, it always evolves and develops, and I think the production as well kind of... Yeah, right, right, yeah. Did you allow the actors to have an input into their role? Yeah, totally. I think that's why as well that it, mm. it, it changed because when you, these two are super talents, super talents, and they can just go places with their characters. And you, when, when you see that magic, it's like, whoa, can you take it there? And then, of course, yeah, things do evolve for sure. Yeah. No, we had a lot of input, didn't yeah. we? we? We discussed about our characters. We, we felt fr free enough to like talk about what we wanted. I remember there was a point where we were discussing whether... Uh, Terrell and Mia should get back together and um, because of the kind of rehearsals and the um, improvisation we had done I was, no that shouldn't happen um, so yeah we've had a lot of input into all of the process but ultimately you trust the director and, yeah. um, and their vision as well um, yeah, that was, to me, that was one of the beauties of working on this project and working with Naeem. Um, like Melissa said, you know, work, Naeem loves the kind of improvisation kind of route. And um, to me, as an actor, that's just like the best thing you want to hear because you kind of get to, you know, expand the character and kind of also show what you're about. And, um, you know, it, it, it pushes you, but it also kind of pushes the actual production team to kind of, oh, okay, to kind of question what they was going to do or, you know, oh. That's interesting. Maybe we was wrong about this. And it kind of, you know, it works in our favour. But it wasn't all easy. I know before I made it sound like it was all great. It's not all easy, you know. Um, working with any director is hard, you know, to push the character to get to the stage we had to get to with the restraints, with the budget. You know, like Naeem said, it was a long process that we had to go through. You know, loads of rehearsals. Um, you know, we had a lot of challenges. But um, again, ultimately, most of these things that you go through that, you know, the bigger it is, the more you're going to go through. And that's the test, you know, so... 
One of the students has asked, obviously you must have faced numerous challenges through the filming process, but what was one of the biggest challenges you had to face during the making of this film? That could be to every one of you, in fact. <laughs> um, so many, man. I, I could have a book uh, written with just all the challenges listed down. I think, um, apart from, you know, that just putting the whole thing together and staying sane, I think... Um, in terms of certain scenes and shoots, I think, you know, shooting in Cornwall in this beach, um, we had to, you know, and just to get to Cornwall was very expensive. So we had to take a coach out there with a crew of maybe 15 people, 10, 15 people, and take this coach, which took 10 hours to get there. So there's no sleep on that coach. And then you have to trek for a couple of hours just to get to this secluded beach. So you get off the coach, and then there's another three hours to get to the beach. And then you get to the beach, and you're climbing, hanging off rocks because the tide's up, and... And that's the cast and crew lugging all the equipment there. And then you get to the beach, there's no like, okay, let's have a rest and that, because now, you know, time's of the essence. So now we've got to shoot the scene and they've got to perform and they haven't slept for like nearly 24 hours and they've got to deliver the performance and the crew's got to deliver these epic shots and you're, and you, you know, they're looking at the watch and you want, you've gone all the way out to Corma with all these people and you have to deliver this beautiful, epic scene. And, you know, things like that are a challenge, but that, that was nearly with every shoot. You know, because we were aiming high and we got all these big grand locations. We're filming on top of the Heron Tower, Europe's highest outdoor bar. And, you know, we're shooting there and you've just got a couple of hours and you've got to get all of this stuff quickly. And then you've got 30 extras waiting outside for the next scene. And, you know, you just got to kind of cope with that sort of mental pressure. Because now that you've invested so much into it of yourself and everybody else, you've got to deliver. You've got to deliver something on a decent scale. And that challenge there every day. And then there's everyone. It's like a manager you know, um, maybe a manager of a football club or something, like Alex Ferguson or something, <laughs> I always say. Um, it's, you go, everyone's different. So you have to kind of, you know, like uh, Paul's, Paul's low-key and he's relaxed, so he's not too much of a headache. Melissa's a bit of a diva. And so, oh, God, here she goes. She wants a trailer and everything. <laughs> nah, nah, Jackie, she's not at all, not at all. You know, and then, then you've got to get Paul off the whiskey, you know. So yeah, there's, there's, you know, every, you've, you've got to kind of like, uh, yeah, deal with so many different people and you can't treat them like robots. Um, you know, you've got to kind of understand people as well as director. That in itself can be a challenge, you know. And sometimes there's people, when there's so many people involved, there can be cancers that can kind of like disrupt the shoot and spread bad vibes. And those people, you need to cancel their contract, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping with the fishes, you know. No, no. But, um, <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff, you know. Yeah, the, yeah the, I could go on and on. That's what we'd love to hear. But um, next question: um, What advice would you give to anyone wanting to st starting out in the industry? Uh, very straightforward. Uh, first of all, anyone that's starting out, go and make your own films, or you know, or if you're working on VFX or you're or you're an editor, work on projects, build a portfolio together. Now is the time. You've got these fantastic facilities around you. You've got like-minded talent around you. This is your production team. This is your production house. It's your studio already. So grab your camera. If you don't have a camera, grab a phone. Start shooting stuff and build a team and develop your work now. Now's the time to develop your craft. If you look at someone like Spielberg, you know, he started out in his days of school and stuff and started shooting little things. And it, it doesn't even have to be the greatest stuff in the world. It's just about practicing, practicing your craft. So, you know, once this show's finished, you know, start putting your plans together and shoot little small shorts and pieces. That is the first step in terms of moving forward. 100%. Do your thing and do it now. And do you think they require any particular skills and qualities to succeed in the industry? It's not, okay, look, technical, creative stuff and all of these things, you can pick that up. But one thing I always say is, is you've you got to develop thick skin. You've got to have a toughness about you because there is a lot of knockbacks in the industry. But don't get dejected. You know, people might criticize your ideas or they might put you down, but don't get dejected. Just keep practicing your craft. Keep trying to make small films. Or if you're a camera person, keep trying to shoot stuff. So develop thick skin. And that comes by the more stuff you make, the more you start to experience working with people. You can experience rejections if they are, but then you bounce back up again. So that would be, you know, there's lots of advice and lots of tips and stuff. But I think, yeah, develop thick skin, get tough and make things happen. Anything is possible, I promise you. We did this film with pretty much nothing, nothing. you know. And I suppose finally, what is next for you? What lies ahead? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, there's quite a few projects we're working on. Uh, there's another short film uh, called Intruders, and it's about... Um, Might there be a sequence? A sequel? 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 Um, possibly. Um, maybe um, Dave comes back from the dead and it could be a zombie <laughs> film or something. Oh, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, I mean, I personally don't have plans, but I don't know. Maybe Naeem's got some... He wants to turn into a TV series or something, a musical even. Um, <laughs> but yeah, our uh, next film is like a, a film that's a dark take on the music industry, a kind of satire, a film noir thriller um, that's mm. coming out. And then there's loads of other projects there that we've got in the pipeline. Yeah, and, um, there's a film I'm working on at the moment, which we've shot, which I'm actually working with all of these guys here. So we're collaborating again. Um, it's called Intruders. And yeah, as Paul said, it's about the dark side of the music industry and... I promise you it's going to be one of the greatest short films ever made. It is, we've already shot it, and it's just looking insane. It's psychedelic. It's just raw, it's just crazy. It's got style, but it's got substance as well. Um, yeah, so that's going to drop early next year. And we've also got a couple of other features in, the, in development as well. We've just done that deal with Amazon Prime as well. So things are starting to build up. But, you know, it does sound a bit rosy, but we're, we're working 24-7. You know, we're putting in the work, and... Yeah, we just want to raise the bar of UK films, so we've got a lot of stuff cooking up, so just watch out. Do you mind what kind of genre you work in, or really anything is open? I think it's just finding the right story. It's just finding a story you want to tell, you think is relevant to society, um, and the themes that you want to convey um, and communicate to people. And genre is just like a tool that you use to tell a story. Um, but it's what you're actually saying that's the important thing. Mm. Okay. Did you have anything to say before I wind up? And mm. Mm. Yeah. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for coming and hopefully en enlivening our students and engaging them. And maybe you could come back and give a workshop for them. Absolutely, and definitely. So this is um, Umran at hashtag DDC. Thank you. That was fantastic, guys. Thank you. <laughs>